by Brian Skeet. Uh, and so I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Christine. I am a business coach at Change Labs, and I'm also the director of Kinship Lending. So I'll be doing the introduction today. So Change Labs um, is about growing native change makers. Uh, Change Labs provides creative workspace, tools, resources, and knowledge for native entrepreneurs. And a lot of the questions that we get, or, or the, 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 the biggest question we get from entrepreneurs out there on Navajo or indigenous um, entrepreneurs is how do I start a business? It's really interesting uh, when you want to start a business on the Navajo Nation, a little bit different than if you were to start your business, say in Flagstaff or in Phoenix or even in, in, in Page. So we offer some services at Change Labs. One of the um, services we offer is business coaching. Our coaching team is available Monday from 11 a.m. Uh, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. for appointments, and so we have a few business coaches, and we rotate uh, the coaching sessions on Monday. So if you're interested in signing up for a coaching ses session, just visit the website nativestartup.org events, and you'll be able to sign up for a time slot that's available on on each of the Mondays of the month. At Change Labs, we have we offer different services, and one of the one of the services we offer is our business incubator. So we select ten highly potential native entrepreneurs each year to help start up and grow their business idea. So um, right now we actually have two business co incubator cohorts going. We have a cohort that is going to be graduating on July 29th. And we just started a new cohort on May 13th. So it's been a, a lot of fun and we've been staying busy with our business incubator. Another question that we get at Change Labs is how do I create a website? People are interested in selling, uh, selling their business products online or their services online. And especially with the pandemic, a lot of people had to pivot their business and take their business online. So that's another question we get is how do I create a website? We currently have a, re a design residency program. Um, you can get one-on-one -on -one help um, developing a website or other creative material for your business. And you can, again, go to our website at nativestartup.org uh, native events to sign up to, uh, to make an appointment with one of the designers. And just so you know, this presentation is being recorded and all of our webinars um, have been recorded. So we have more than 30 videos covering social media st strategy and how to build a simple website on our YouTube channel. So you can find that if you go to our website and go to resources. And of course, another question we get is how do I get help running my business? And we do have a creative co-working space at Change Labs. Right now, our co-working space is loca located in Tuba City behind the, um, the Legacy Hotel in Moen Kopi. And we provide a desk space, Wi-Fi, color printing, button making, uh, monthly training, which we actually are doing now virtually. And we offer more services to entrepreneurs in our community. So if you're ever in the Tuba City area, stop by and check out the co-working space. Um, we are limited to how many people we allow into the space uh, due to um, uh, COVID restrictions. But just give us a call uh, there at the co-working space or check out this information on the website and we'll be able to get you in so you can uh, have a visit there and get some of the services at that location. Another service that we offer at Change Labs is Res Rising. Res Rising is actually an app that you can download um, or you can get on, on your phone. And this is a place where you can go and look at the, the 
630 plus native businesses across the Southwest. They're located on this app and Change Labs is continually going in and updating and making sure we have all of their uh, the businesses updated and current. So if you wanna know, like if you're in, in Shiprock and you wanna know of any businesses that does like printing, for example, you can go and check out the Res Rising app and you'll be able to find somebody who does print uh, t-shirt printing in Tuba City on the app. So just go there and check it out. It's a great, it's a great, it's a great app that we have uh, through Change Labs. And if you have any more questions, um, you can contact Marsha Grayeyes. Uh, Marsha, she does all the coordinating for these webinars, and also she is the director of the co-working space in Tuba City. So you can email her at Marsha um, at nativestartup.org if you have, or if you have any questions for me, uh, my email is Christine at nativestartup.org. Um, you can find our information on our website. So just a few housekeeping rules. Um, stay on mute until we get to the question and answer segment at the end of the presentation or during the presentation. Um, and then type your questions in the chat. Uh, we'll make sure to read out the questions um, so that those questions are um, brought up and you can have those questions on the YouTube uh, video. The session is being recorded, like I said, so uh, if you happen to know somebody who is missing this, you can let them know that we have this recorded on our YouTube channel. All right, so I'm going to introduce you to Brian Skeet. He is gonna be doing the presentation today and his topic is product packaging basics for startups. So I would uh, like to introduce Brian and he'll give you some more, more information about himself and get the presentation started. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen real quick. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay. And then share. Say host disabled participant sharing. Um, I think I need sharing access. There we go. All right, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Um, my name is uh, Brian Skeet and uh, I just wanna say yat e. Uh, thank you um, uh, for being here today and, and sitting in um, so that I can introduce you to uh, product packaging uh, for small businesses. Um, I'm of the uh, the Rock Gap clan and born of the Towering House people. Um, and I was uh, born in Tuba City. So that's Tuba City is definitely my hometown. Um, I also uh, have my associate's degree in graphic design uh, from the Art Institute of Phoenix, um, a bachelor's degree in industrial design and design management from the design school at ASU. And currently, um, I am the owner of Brian Skeet Design, um, owner and designer. Um, I am also a uh, industrial designer for the Indigit Design Collab based out of Phoenix, Arizona. And I currently am participating with the uh, IDSA, the Industrial Design Society of America uh, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Leadership Team and also the liaison for the professional chapter uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. All right, so just a little bit more about my background, um, my packaging background anyway. Um, so I have about 10 years of experience, a uh, packaging experience. Um, I started at an, as an intern at Prismographic, uh, which is the company here, uh, making printing plates um, and all the printing plates actually came through through my department. So every every job uh, that was produced um, came through me, which I learned a lot about uh, color correction. I learned a lot about um, how the printing process uh, actually plays a huge role into printing and packaging. Um, 
while I was in that department, um, in my downtime, uh, the customer service reps would talk to the uh, to the customers, and a lot of times they would get some sort of dimension or some sort of idea of a concept of what they wanted uh, for like either like a packaging design or um, a kind of like a pocket folder business card or, or, or whatnot. And so they would handwrite the dimensions, give it to me and I would cut it out. Um, so I'd make these mock-ups and I would do that um, eight hours a day um, in part of making plates as well. So I was I was really, I'm really in tune to how the uh, packaging process works um, in that uh, making mocks up, mock-ups definitely helps you understand the uh, three-dimensional structure of, uh, of packaging. And then uh, within that department, uh, they were experimenting with another department uh, for large format. And that's where I was able to um, play with a digital cutter, um, cutting out uh, cardboard um, boxes, corrugated boxes, and being able to design custom boxes on the fly. Um, before uh, we had that tool, uh, we had to send the uh, die lines, which are these like metal like cookie cutters, um, out to another company, wait for that to come back. And usually that's like two to three weeks before we get that back. Uh, but this digital cutting machine allowed us to cut um, same day, um, make any sort of adjustments, tweaks to the packaging, and then submit that die line to the customer's designer, and they would uh, implement the design on the on the box uh, die line, send it back to us, and we could produce it. So uh, I would had that experience with uh, digital cutting and corrugated boxes as well. So what is product packaging? So product packaging offers a fundamental purpose in that it protects your product from being damaged in transit and also allows your brand to carry forward to your customer. Um, packaging is not for all startups and businesses and that's, that's okay. However, if your business ships products, um, but packaging is not on the list of your investments, you might wanna possibly rethink um, where you are putting your money because Packaging can have a, a long-term effect um, in your marketing um, strategy. So to kind of break up the um, uh, types of uh, packaging and what we're gonna go through. So we're gonna go through the different types of layers, the process, the materials, and the shipping. And when we talk about product packaging layers, um, we're talking about the uh, the outer packaging, the inner packaging, and the product packaging itself. Um, the outer packaging is, is the first thing that a customer sees. It's what protects the product from all the elements. So in shipping, um, like let's say you have this uh, um, box of uh, let's say, um, like we'll take kombucha, for example, when you're shipping these out, usually you wouldn't see these uh, bottles of glass kombucha being sent out in kind of like the, the six pack, but you would see them more into um, something like this where it would be enclosed. That way you could stack the, um, uh, the packages on top of each other without damaging the actual product itself. So this is a really important structure to protect your, your product. And the inner packaging is very interesting because that's what allows, that's what keeps everything in the package um, from rattling around and becoming damaged. Um, a lot of the times the uh, inner packaging is um, lightweight. So you have kind of like this cut up craft paper or you can use um, uh, peanuts like styrofoam peanuts, um, uh, things that will uh, not add weight to the overall package, um, but will keep everything stable and, and safe and so that it, it doesn't arrive damaged when it becomes to your customer. And then we're talking about the product packaging itself, which is what most people think of when they think of packaging. And that's what the, um, the look and the brand and the, and the feel of, of your product. So if you're 
uh, making like, for instance, these shower gels, um, the consistency of the brand all across um, all of the different products uh, has to be cohesive. So, but not all of the products are the same size. So the designer has to take into account that when they design these, they, they have to use uh, the logo in a way where it's consistent, but also use the colors in a way where it's consistent as well. So it's kind of a, a creative uh, problem that designers uh, usually uh, work through in, in designing um, the product packaging. So what does the process of this look like? So when we talk about a uh, large scale, um, we're talking about possibly six different um, elements. And then the six different elements are um, one, the brief. And that's when the client um, will meet with a printer or designer and talk about your needs. Uh, this is where the uh, printer slash designer will develop a relationship with you and then help you kind of through the process. And so you know what to expect. And this is also the best time to ask any sort of questions you may have about the process before you kind of get, um, get too involved. Um, two is the project planning. So after the brief, um, you'll build a kind of a tentative plan uh, with your printer, your designer, and this will be placed on a, on a schedule um, so that the, the printer or your designer can understand how long it'll take to order materials, how long the production will take, um, how long it'll take to ship out, and also the cost for the whole production itself, and also the shipping in, in um, in that as well. Um, all of the, the complexity and the time and the time frame all factor into the to the cost of how much you will end up spending for product packaging. So this is a good time to determine um, this what type of shipping party logistics that you prefer. So when we talk about shipping uh, party logistics, uh, we're talking about whether it's what they would call 1PL, 2PL, or 3PL, and that goes all the way up to 3PL. So basically what 1PL means is that it's, um, it's considered as one party logistic. So one party logistic is you're basically producing the product, putting in a package, and you are hand delivering it yourself. So there's only one person um, that is interacting between the business itself and um, when the customer actually receives the product. 2PL uses a kind of a, a shipping service like uh, FedEx, UPS um, to deliver the product to the customer. 3PL um, uses a warehouse um, kind of in the middle between uh, your business and um, and where it's going to. So it's like a, a third party fulfillment company. So if you're producing a lot of product, uh, but you have no place to put it, um, you can hire a third party fulfillment um, company to store all that extra product. And the good thing about that too, is that when you get, when you get big enough, you're able to let that fulfillment uh, company, the third party uh, fulfillment company to take care of all of um, you know, the inventory, keeping you updated in the stock, um, keeping you updated on any sort of returns. So it kind of alleviates that stress of having to deal with, um, you know, when, when a customer orders a product that you have to go, th go through and ship it, that doesn't happen anymore with the third party. You basically just have to worry about making sure that it gets to, the, um, to where it needs to go. Um, and so then there's the, uh, uh, the research and concept. So in this stage, uh, the printer designer will take your research and then their research that they've, they've uh, developed themselves and they'll synthesize the information to meet your objectives um, visually. So the designers will tend to try to set your brand apart from everyone else so that you can get the, the edge um, above the competition. Um, so they'll ask questions like, you know, what makes your, what makes your product unique? How much, how can design and the right package structure work in your favor? And they may even offer like visual concepts and renders just to kind of give 
you an idea of what they're thinking about. And that's always good because then you kind of figure out whether you're on the same page or not. Um, and in this stage, uh, if you're not really sure about your product design, they may kind of just break it down into what you would call like a skeleton, um, a mock-up. So a skeleton mock-up is basically just like a, 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 a really low fidelity um, sketch or um, kind of a, a map of like your, your product and all the elements that go onto it. So for instance, um, if you have like, let's say a bottle, but you don't know like what to actually put on the bottle, like what information is actually necessary. So the one thing that you'll probably need is like the, the fluid ounces on the bottle. You also need the ingredients and then you also need um, the actual name of the product itself. So like, let's say it had a, like a certain scent or something like coconut, um, that would all need to be on there. And so the skeleton actually gives kind of like a roadmap of like where those be placed. And then that allows the designer kind of determine it's like, okay, well, I know that these elements absolutely need to be on there. I'll do my design around that and I'll, I'll incorporate that, but I'll make sure that all, all of those necessary and all that necessary information is within that, uh, within that label. And then the design and production, um, that's when, you know, you have kind of the final uh, say on, on the, how the package is gonna be delivered, whether it's gonna be a box, a bottle, whatnot. And then the designer will come up with a, a design that will be within, um, within your brand. And also, uh, one, this is kind of a, a, a good point where if you want to think about um, changes or anything like that, or you wanna possibly go a different direction, this is the, the place to do it. You do not want to do it after you've approved everything. Uh, once you've approved everything and set every, everything out the door to, to production, it's going to cost you a lot of money in order to make any sort of changes. So the next stage is um, after the product is ready and produced, uh, after everything has been approved, um, it's ready to be shipped. So this may be determined on your planning stage based on your budget, team, and size. So if you have the budget and the team size to, to handle shipping, yeah, go for it. Like I would say like find like a, a 3PL type of um, uh, shipping strategy or, or project plan and then use that. If it's just you, you're a small team and your budget is really small, then I would, I would consider either doing a 1PL or even Actually, you'd probably be doing 2PL anyway. You'd be using like FedEx or UPS. Um, and that's not a problem. That's what a lot of people end up using. But you'll need to figure out um, what type of boxes, size boxes that you'll need for your company. And it's a good rule of thumb to have like, like one, or two, one or two sizes that you go to all the time. And try to use the smallest package that you possibly can. Um, it'll save you money and that way you don't really have to um, uh, worry about shipping these large boxes for like a, a small little candle. Um, if you have like a smaller box that you have and then you have a larger box, um, that's, that's awesome. Like I think that th that's a really good strategy. And if you can consolidate any of those, um, consolidate as much as you can. The less boxes that go out, the more money that you'll save. And then as far as the, uh, the end of the process, you always want to try to get feedback on how the customer experience was. Um, one, of the, one of the best things about packaging is that it, it offers an opportunity for you to create an impression when you're not there in front of the customer. So when they open the package, they are um, either blown away by you know how nice everything was put in there and how thoughtful everything was or you're gonna, you're gonna deter them if it's messy things are broken and it looks like someone just threw it in there so just just keep that in mind and that, that's really a, a, a good um, kind of a, a positive 
of using using packaging and it's it really does create a, a memorable experience. So one of the uh, large scale packaging um, companies that I recommend is uh, Prismographic, which is here in Phoenix, Arizona, and they actually have a separate department uh, for uh, packaging design now. So, but yada la. What if I what if I don't go through all that? And I just want to create the packaging myself. Fair enough. Um, a lot of the companies that we that we work with at Change Labs are very uh, small. And so a lot of them are DIYers. A lot of them do it themselves. So in the smaller scale process, um, you probably will still need um, a designer um, to get a brief on, on what you need. You could do it yourself. And I know a lot of uh, companies that do, but just remember that a designer is specialized in designing um, packaging logos and, and things of that sort. So you're really being more efficient if you hand it off to a designer, a good designer, and they can take, take your brand, take what you um, have as a business and then, and then carry that forward. That way you don't have to deal with it. Um, it just becomes more efficient and you're using your resources uh, wisely. And there are also um, third-party tools too. So if you go to packlane.com, um, they are a company that specializes in packaging and they have a, a tool built into the website that allows you to upload your art and you could see the art being placed onto the package in 3D. So it's pretty cool. Um, check it out. Um, that's something I prefer. They also do low quantity, um, like between, I think as low as like five boxes. Um, and they also go all the way up to think over, over a thousand and a thousand boxes as well. They have different dimensions, different sizes. So packlane.com, I definitely would check that out. Um, and as far as the project planning, um, you really wanna kind of determine like what type of box you want to use for, for this part. So if you want to um, just put, have a mailer and then put everything in it but not have anything printed on the outside, um, that's fine. Um, I would recommend at least putting at least 1% of your revenue aside for that. And also if you decide that you want to use like a custom standard packaging design um, that has print on the outside of it so that you could carry forward that brand, I would recommend putting about 3% aside for uh, the print of the box. And it also is relative to how many um, packages that you're producing. So just, just take that into account as well. Um, and as far as like shipments, uh, companies like Packlane do offer kind of like a, a DIY approach. I would definitely check that out. Um, this is this is great, and that allows you to compare prices of, of different shipping options and also print labels. So um, I know it's really hard to to ship things um, from and to um, addresses on on Navajo. So I get that. So just try to do your research on like what. Um, what carriers work best for you and try to uh, try to incorporate that into your budget for your for your company. So kind of going back to the uh, product patching packaging process and and that what I was talking about with uh, you know the difference between one percent of your annual revenue versus three percent. So this is kind of like a visual of that. So the 1% is just nothing on the box itself. It's just a, a blank box. 3% allows you to kind of spend a little bit more on the, uh, the color and the design. So what the 3% does it actually account for um, the design that design time and the design costs that would go into that. It, it would be just more of the um, actual extra printing process. So as far as like the smaller scale, um, processes, the uh, resources I would recommend is Packlane and Lumi. And then as far as the materials go, um, the three common types are paperboard, corrugated, and uh, like a mailer or poly bag. Uh, paperboard is good for like food, dairy, cosmetics, hardware, uh, retail packaging. 
things where you want to get like a super crisp um, type of fold cut or um, incorporate in sort of like clear poly type of uh, uh, plastic. Um, and SVS stands for the uh, solid bleach surface uh, chipboard. So it's a white chipboard and that stuff is really expensive, but it, it pays, it looks really great when it's printed. And as far as the corrugated, um, corrugated is probably the most common. Um, you can use it for produce, heavy objects, e-commerce, packaging, shipping cartons, inserts. So this is commonly used for like when you have like the moving boxes that you buy from like Home Depot or something. Um, that's what corrugated is. Um, it's basically uh, a lamination of a paper, like two pieces of paper and a fluted uh, piece of paper, kind of like a, like a ripple in between. Everyone's seen um, cardboard before. And then one thing to note is that when you're dealing with corrugated material, that there are different types of corrugated material. So there's thinner and then there's, um, there's thicker. So um, a C flute would be the kind of like the, uh, your typical like um, moving box type of, uh, type of cardboard. And E flute is much thinner. Um, the good thing about e-flute is that when it makes bends and you have a lot of complex cuts, it does better than it does with, with c-flute. C-flute, if you get too um, uh, intricate with your packaging, then it kind of just falls apart. But c-flute is really great when you're shipping it to places because it holds together and protects everything inside. Um, poly bags and mailers. I like poly bags and mailers because they're cheaper. Um, they fit shirts and clothing. The only bad thing about them is that if you have anything fragile, then you have you will have a hard time with with keeping it protected. As far as shipping goes, um, you know, poly bags and millers are, like I said before, um, poly bags I prefer much more, only because they allow you to um, ship more for much less. So the way that milling system works is that if you ship something, even if it's like a t-shirt and you ship one in a, in a box versus a mailer, they'll charge you more for what's in the box because it's taking up more space. Um, and as far as weight and size, like I said before, uh, weight and size does matter. And if you have to, uh, to ship something um, that is in a large box, try to consolidate as much as you possibly can with that, within that box. And then, like I said before, do your research and shop around for different different prices. Um, I know lately it's been really crazy with the uh, with the pandemic, but as things kind of start opening up again, um, start looking into more uh, uh, shipping um, shipping options. And as far as the resources go, like I can't like harp harp on it enough. But Lumi and um, and Packlane, um, they're doing really. Uh, amazing work in that they're allowing those DIYers to create an, an all-in-one packaging uh, design, production, and shipping um, process. So check them out. Um, they do really amazing work and I've, had, I've heard some really great, uh, great things about them as well. So, but the most important thing about packaging and the reason to invest in it is that you want to leave an impression when your packaging is open for the first time. It's about creating a memorable experience for your customer. And as the number one, um, number one thing about packaging that sets it from all of, all of other marketing materials is that it allows the, the customer to remember you. Um, and then I'm gonna show you some, some really amazing uh, products that I've received myself that are really uh, have left a really good impression with me. And they're actually uh, these products here. Lotus and Lane, um, they uh, specialize in leather goods. They do amazing work. Um, Summer and La Mendez, they are an amazing team. Um, they are a black and indigenous owned leather goods company based out of cornfields. Um, the one thing I like about their package is that it offers kind of like a hybrid option in that 
they are using kind of the external type of packaging, but they're still using print on it. This package right here has a label put on the actual lip of the, the package to keep it sealed, but that's it. That's all you have. And then once you actually get the package, um, you cut open the, uh, the shipping label, you open it up and then within, within that box, there is kind of a, a bag that the uh, wallet is sitting in and a note and a business card. And I still remember that experience. And it was, it's one thing that I think that separates their products from, from all the other products that I've received before um, in, in terms of like leather goods. Other leather goods, like they usually just like put it in a poly bag and, and send it to me. This was really memorable to me. Um, and then Yego Coffee. Yego Coffee is uh, out of Flagstaff. They don't, I believe they don't ship, but they do have a good uh, shelf presence. However, if you were to ship this somewhere, you probably had to put it within another uh, like external package, but that's not a problem. The way that this stands on the, on the shelf is really well done. And Blue Corn Customs, my favorite. So they do, they're like legitimate DIY. I mean, everything that they do is um, all the hand, all the labels are hand done. They're, these are printed from their home printer and um, they leave a note with you within the box um, saying thank you. And the packaging that they use from, from the internal, which is they have the uh, kind of the lightweight um, shredded paper to the external, which they don't spend a lot of money on printing on the outside of the box to the actual uh, product packaging, which all of it is cohesive. It tells me what it is. It has a, a logo that's very consistent across all of the different, uh, different products. It's just a really good experience when you open this up. So my hat's off to all of these, uh, these companies and that spending the time on the design for the product packaging, the external packaging and the internal packaging. So hats off to you guys. So that is it. And that is my presentation. And thank you very much. I will guess we'll be open for questions. All right, if anyone has any questions, um, you can ask your questions or you can type them into the chat box. This is Joe, I got a question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I have a question. So one of my favorite YouTube channels was, uh, is um, Unboxing Therapy. Have you seen that? I think the guy's based out of Canada. I have, yeah. So he does reviews of uh, different products and how they're packaged together. So everything you're talking about, uh, I think this guy really uh, discusses. I think it's, it, you're right. It is really important for the customer consumer experience. So are there some other people out there that um, maybe discuss this topic even or cover it uh, in, as well that maybe you're you can share with us because I was just thinking about unboxing therapy as you were talking about everything. That's all. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of the um, main uh, YouTube channels that I follow is Lumi. Um, let's see if I can put it here in the chat. But they do a really amazing job. There are so many different YouTube um, uh, topics that they go over regarding packaging. So check them out. The, uh, the girl in there is like super intense, but she goes through all the information super quick. So it's, it's, uh, it's all relevant. All right, well, thank you everyone for joining our webinar today. Again, if you have any questions, you can email either Marsha Grayeyes at Marsha at nativestartup.org or myself, Christine Laughter, or I'm sorry, Christine at nativestartup.org. 
And we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar. Uh, you'll be able to see uh, find out more information on the next webinar on our website at nativestartup.org. But thank you very much, Brian. It was a very informative session and look forward to doing more work with you in the future. Have a great day, everyone. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, everybody. <laughs>